friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of juniper, not just the berries, but the greens as well. And that includes which juniper plants you should avoid. So whenever you're getting into this kind of stuff, it's good to know which ones are the safest ones to use because there are all kinds of different varieties out there. But before I get into this, let me remind you that this video right here is going to go in the playlist along with the many other videos I already have out on the benefits of various different herbs, foods, and more. So I'll be putting that playlist link in the description box just below the video screen. Make sure to click on more or show more somewhere down here below the video screen to access that. Plus I'll be putting several different articles in relation to juniper and juniper berries that you may find interesting. And I do suggest you read those to learn more about it. Mostly today I'll be talking about the benefits and uses. So right here are the greens from my own juniper, which I will say I'm not positive since these junipers were planted long before we got this place. I cannot say what was any certainty if this is of the so-called toxic variety or not. I'm going to have to assume it is and just keep using it the way I've been using it for making cleaning vinegars. Though I have made tea out of this and it was pretty tasty and it didn't kill me and it, I didn't have any adverse side effects whatsoever. And then you've got your juniper berries. These particular ones were sent to me by one of my followers, a Texas girl. Thank you again for that. And I have more juniper berries coming in because I really, really like these. So let's get to talking about the juniper so you can know, first of all, which ones are the safest varieties. And the, the one that is most commonly used is the juniperus commonus. But there are many varieties out there are, that are safe. The two that you have to watch out for are the juniperus sabina and the juniperus oxycedrus and I'll put those spellings here so you can see what those are. Now what I did to kind of find out what this was to at least help me narrow it down which it didn't entirely help. I put in Juniper Sabina and that's the one that looks quite a bit like this as far as the way the leaves grow. I'll put a few pictures here so you can see what that one looks like. Now the commonest in your other types of juniper that are most commonly used for medicine and more look more like little needles the way maybe a pine would look or a spruce rather than ones that look more like leaves the way this hangs. However, the oxycedrus also has those same looking needles. I did notice in the pictures of the oxycedrus the picture the berries most commonly seem to show up red where all the other varieties showed up blue. Now the reason the two varieties are considered toxic is because they have a very high amount of thujone, which is also found in your other varieties of juniper as well as many other medicinal herbs such as sage, rosemary, sweet chamomile, let's see I wrote a list of some others, hyssop, yarrow, quite a few of your different mints, wormwood, mugwort, licorice, and more. So it's not that thujone is necessarily a bad thing, but in high quantities it can become toxic. So that would mean any of the herbs that have this in it, like I know sweet, uh, I know that wormwood is pretty high in it as well, so you have to be careful with that, but it's all going to be about the amount you use. So maybe if this really is a, the so-called toxic variety, the fact that I didn't have that much of it, I just may, had a couple of cups of tea from it, um, that could be why I didn't have any effects. But maybe if I was drinking a gallon of the tea made from this, that could then have adverse effects. To be on the safe side, if you're not sure what your juniper is, I do, I'm going to recommend you don't use it for anything internally. But we know that the Native Americans still did use those particular ones for medicine as well. And the most common way to use them medicinally would be in the form of teas and tinctures. I'm going to talk about some other uses, but let's get into these benefits. So the first list I'm going to read through are the actions of the juniper. And then in my second list, I'm going to be reading off the specific ailments and such that it is good for based off these very actions. So 
antiseptic, antioxidant, antiviral, antifungal, anti-inflammatory. It is diuretic, hypoglycemic, which of course that should tell you right there is going to be helpful for anyone with diabetes. Hypolipidemic, which would tell you is going to help with weight loss. Styptic, which helps stop blood flow. Neuroprotective, which means it's going to be good for brain health antiparasitic and sedative. So now let me read off a list of some specific systems in the body and ailments it can be helpful towards. That would be at improving digestion, helping with urinary tract infections. It's good for your heart health, for, as I already mentioned, your diabetic health. It can it be good at helping to lower your blood sugar. So that's what that word hypoglycemic would mean, lowering of the blood sugar. Is good for helping with sleep. That would be in reference to the sedative properties. It is helpful for skin conditions. So this is both taking it internally, but also using it in a salve. You can make an oil extract or infusion out of your greens and or berries to use in a salve or use directly as is. And I did mention that being hypolipidemic, which means it is good for helping with weight loss, relieving gout, preventing Parkinson's, that's the uh, neuroprotective properties right there. It's helpful for arthritis and treating certain cancers and protecting against those certain cancers as well. It's helpful relieving colds and flus, lung infections, kidney troubles, tapeworm, heartburn, menstrual pain, headaches, and Alzheimer's, which I mentioned, so Alzheimer's right along with Parkinson's, and I'm sure there's many more that I didn't get on my list. So again, let's go over those uses for medicinal purposes, that would be teas, tinctures, infused oil, or even essential oil that's usually pressed from the seed or the greens themselves. So if you're making teas, I don't have measurements, I don't use measurements, I always just make my teas in a pot and I've taken a couple of small handfuls of the berries and thrown them into my silver teapot. And then in this case, because the berries are actually uh, cones, they're not actually berries, they're cones. They look like berries. They, they seem like berries because they have a seed in the middle and they're, they got a slightly sweet flavor to them, but they're actually cones. So anyway, for the pot, I just throw in a couple of small handfuls. And uh, I, again, I really, really like the tea with the berries as well as with the leaves. And I've even mixed the two together, the leaves and the berries. You can combine any other herbs and spices you want with it, but the flavor would be similar to what you would expect from any kind of evergreen. It's gonna have an evergreen flavor. It's gonna be a little bit sharp, or even though as a tea, they both seem to have the same flavor. The berries though, left in the teapot after you're done with the tea or in your mug, if you're putting it in a mug, is that you can then eat the berries and that's when the sweetness comes out, that little bit of sweetness, and I really like that. I just eat a few at a time, not too many, but then you can get that last little bit that's in there, especially that seed. You can act, it's a little hard, but you can actually chew up that seed. So some other uses as far as food goes, uh, juniper berry was, is what is used to make gin, by the way, but you can add that to any of your natural sodas or whatever sounds good to you. Um, some people will use the berries as a, you know, the dried berries as a peppercorn replacement and then just grind them up. A lot of people will use them as a spice for any, for various different types of meat dishes. The greens also can be chopped up and also be used as a spice in various different dishes. I think I already mentioned, I use the greens quite a bit for my own juniper for making vinegars and that I like to use as a cleaning vinegar. It's either gonna be something I use in my laundry, use for cleaning the floors, maybe even use for washing my hair. And uh, it does have a nice smell to it when you do that. The last vinegar I made was a combination of the juniper and some citrus peels. Now I do want to mention, just like with any herb, if you're on any kind of medication, you really need to look into that for yourself. I do have a video I'll link to down below on how to do your own research because there are so many different medications out there now I've never even heard of. And even seems like every day there's some new ailment I've never heard of. And so I can't give you all the answers on that. You need to learn how to do your own research. So I'll link to that video. Hopefully it will be a good starting ground for you to understand how to tailor your 
searches when you're trying to understand what you can use or should use. But in a lot of cases, different medicinal herbs or herbs used in a medicinal way can cancel out the medication, which is a lot of times why they won't recommend it because the herb itself is working good enough. But it can also be negative and maybe adding too much. So maybe you're taking this as a diuretic, but you're already taking a diuretic medication. Well, maybe you're gonna get uh, dehydrated by having too much flushing out of your system at once. So it's always good to understand that. Also, if you're pregnant or nursing or have any allergies to evergreens and particular to juniper, then obviously this is something you should avoid. You may not know it until you start using it. So never assume that any negative side effect of any kind of natural herb or whatever it is that you're taking, never assume it's a Herxheimer or a detox. It's better to assume that either you're allergic or that is just simply not made for you and you need to stop. That could be your body telling you, I'm getting too much of this or this isn't working for, a, for me, stop taking it. I think too many people wanna jump on the, oh, it's just detox and I've seen it happen time and time again so people keep doing the same thing because they think it's just detox or somebody told them it's just detox and then they get sicker, sicker and sicker. So never assume that, always stop, wait for a while, give your body a break, and then try it again, and then see how you do at that point. So any thoughts, ideas, if you use juniper in particular, how do you use it? Do you like to tincture it? Do you like to make teas? Do you like to use it in cooking? Please share with us in comments down below so people can learn from you as well. And thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.